Today we're going to be talking about how to find the sum of the series of partial sums. And in this particular problem, we've been given the series of partial sums s sub n is equal to 2 minus 3 times 0 0.8 raised to the n power. Now before we talk about how to find the sum of the series, I want to talk briefly about the difference between a series and a series of partial sums. Just to illustrate this concept quickly, let's say that we have a regular series, we'll call it a sub n. And we're going to go ahead and list the terms in this series, and then I want to show you the difference between a regular series and the partial sums of the series. Partial sums are usually denoted by S sub n to indicate S for sum. So if the terms in our series, for example, are just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right, like this, those are the terms in our regular series. The series of partial sums will be the sum of the associated term and every value in the series before it. So for the first term, it's just exactly the same, right? We have one here, we have one here. But for our second term, instead of just two, we take two and we add it to the value of the series before that, which is one. So two plus one is three. For the third term, we take the third term and the second term and the first term and add those together. 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 6. We get 6 there. When we add 4 to that, we get 10. We add 5 to 10, we get 15. And we add 6 to 15 and we get 21. This is the series of partial sums of the series a sub n. So we would denote this series 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as the series a sub n. The series of partial sums of this series would be denoted S sub n as 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21. So that's the difference. And in this particular case, obviously, we have the series of partial sums S sub n in this equation here. Now, how do we find the sum of the series of partial sums? Well, what we need to know is that what we're really talking about here is the infinite sum of the series A sub n, right, from n equals 1 to infinity. That's the sum of the series, but we're dealing here with partial sums. Well, it turns out that the sum of the series as we take n out to infinity is just equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of S sub n, the series of partial sums. So this is a convenient tool for us. This is a convenient equation for us to use often because if we have the series of partial sums here, S sub n, we can just take the limit as that series goes to infinity and it gives us the sum of our original series. So what we're gonna be evaluating here is the limit as n goes to infinity of S sub n. Now to do that in place of S sub n, we can just plug in our equation here. So we'll get the limit as n goes to infinity of our equation two minus three times 0.8 raised to the n power. Now, if we essentially plug in an infinite value here for n, if we plug in an extremely large value for n, what we find is that this quantity here, 0 0.8 raised to the n power, continues to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Because if you take 0.8 and you multiply it by itself, what you get, of course, is 0.64 which is a smaller value than 0.8. If you multiply it again by 0 0.8, 0 0.64 by 0.8, or in other words, 0.8 cubed, you get 0.512. The value continues to decrease and get less and less and less and less. So what we can say is that as n goes to infinity, this 0.8 to the n becomes zero, and it's just gonna go away. It's be gonna become zero. So what we're left with here is two minus three times zero. Of course, that takes away the three as well. We get three times zero here that goes away, and we're just left with a value of two. What this tells us is that the sum of the series, the sum of the series a sub n, whatever it is, and we didn't have the series a sub n to model, we only had s sub n, but the sum of the series is two, and we know that using the equation for the series of partial sums, which we denoted as S sub n. So that's how we use the series of partial sums to find the sum of the series A sub n, in this case, 2.